Hola, muy buenos días a todos y a todas. Mi nombre es Carolina González, soy subdirectora de Entorno para la Innovación y muy, estamos muy contentos de recibirlos a todos. Estoy, estoy, ya puse la presentación, así que estoy un poco ciega, pero sé que hay más de 40 personas ahí conectadas para poder conocer un poco respecto de un, la apertura de un nuevo programa, ¿no es cierto?, en el marco de la internacionalización que ha propiciado Corfo a partir del año 2022 en el marco de la red de Internacional Eureka. Vamos entonces. Eh, para comenzar, nosotros quisimos comenzar a tiempo, ¿no es cierto?, porque tenemos un invitado eh, importante en esta sesión que es Nicolo Civini. I don't know if I said your last name well, but <laughs> sorry. Eh, Nicolo es representante del programa Euroya, quien nos va a dar todo un un breve barrido por lo que es el programa, pero también cómo postular y sobre todo los casos destacados que se han eh, propiciado en torno, ¿no es cierto?, a estos, esta, estas colaboraciones internacionales entre los diferentes países. Así que va a ser bien interesante su charla. Aprovechen de anotar. Vamos a hacer la charla de Nicolosi en inglés. Pero todo lo que tiene relación con con el programa y eh, la participación de Corfu la vamos a hacer en español. ¿Sí? Vamos. Eh, entonces, para comenzar, solamente recordar que la red internacional Eureka se ha generado como una iniciativa que es parte de la ejecución de las actividades que tiene como CORE o como estrategia, línea estratégica, la Gerencia de Innovación de Corfo, y es por ello recordar solamente que la Gerencia de Innovación tiene como misión, ¿no es cierto?, fomentar la investigación, el desarrollo y la innovación empresarial. Ojo ahí, súper importante, empresarial. Nosotros buscamos, ¿no es cierto?, el desarrollo de proyectos que apunten a la I más D, pero también a la innovación desde el punto de vista de la para mejorar la competitividad de las empresas, las condiciones habilitantes, ¿no es cierto?, sus capacidades internas, pero también la productividad tanto de la empresa como del país. ¿Cómo lo hacemos esto? A través de tres líneas de acción principales, que son el cofinanciamiento, donde ustedes nos conocen, ¿no es cierto?, por de entregar cofinanciamientos o subsidios, certificaciones a través de la Ley de Incentivo Tributario para la Investigación y Desarrollo, y obviamente nosotros como área de entorno en el acompañamiento durante todo el transcurso del proceso de postulación, pero también beneficios asociados una vez que se adjudiquen los subsidios Corfo. Brevemente recordarles que nosotros tenemos una ruta de la innovación y nosotros estamos constantemente haciendo hincapié a invitarlos a que se atrevan a innovar y es aquí donde tenemos los principales instrumentos que tenemos a cargo de nuestra gerencia eh, que están transversalmente, ¿no es cierto?, apoyados por o transversalmente, ¿no es cierto?, con los ejes estratégicos de sostenibilidad, género y territorio. Tenemos instrumentos que apoyan la, a, la, las condiciones habilitantes para la innovación, es decir, aquellas empresas que por diferentes motivos no tienen la capacidad interna para poder generar eh, eh, o tener oficinas de áreas de innovación o tener eh, profesionales que sean capaces de poder resolver desafíos de I más de maíz, pues bien, nosotros ahí tenemos dos instrumentos que son Ventanilla Abierta, Capital Humano para la Innovación y Programa de Absorción Tecnológica. Obviamente estas ventanillas ya eh, es para este año eh, han, han, han ido en cierres, o sea, ya se han mencionado los cierres a través de diferentes redes sociales, pero que Queremos siempre hacer la invitación a estar atentos a nuestros calendarios y atentos a octubre que se vienen novedades respecto al calendario 2025. Por otra parte, también tenemos los instrumentos que apoyan el desarrollo y la innovación, donde tenemos Innova Región, eh, Crea y Valida y, e Innova Alta Tecnología. Y obviamente vamos a hablar que me específico en todo lo que tiene relación a los instrumentos relacionados con la red Eureka. Y para terminar, todos aquellos proyectos que ya han desarrollado, validado su prototipo, ¿no es cierto?, y han identificado mercados, pues bien, los invitamos a nuestra última parte de nuestra ruta a postular a Consolida y Expande. Recuerden también que nuestros instrumentos tienen un 10% de cofinanciamiento, de, de financiamiento, perdón, para empresas lideradas por mujeres, así como también eh, puntaje eh, adicional, lo que tiene referencia a beneficios para pymes que cuenten con el sello 40 horas. 
Dicho esto, vamos a hablar de la con, del plan de acción y todo lo que tiene relación con la colaboración internacional. Como ya les mencioné en un principio, desde el 2022 nosotros estamos desde Corfo a través de la Gerencia de Innovación liderando el proceso de eh, la, ley, la red de Eureka, que es la red de Eureka, ¿no es cierto? Se lo vamos a contar más adelante, pero lo que busca principalmente, así como también otros convenios de colaboración que hemos tenido con eh, eh, también países de manera bilateral, buscamos principalmente fomentar el desarrollo colaborativo de proyectos de I más D más I entre empresas chilenas y empresas extranjeras. ¿Para qué? Ahí se los vamos a contar más adelante. ¿Qué es la red Eureka? La red de Eureka, como bien le señalaba, es una red de alrededor de 45 países, ¿no es cierto?, que busca principalmente fomentar el desarrollo de proyectos colaborativos en el marco de la investigación, desarrollo y la innovación. Importante señalar que esta es una plataforma de cooperación internacional, la cual no entrega subsidios, sino que las agencias de innovación que están dentro de la red son las que entregan este subsidio. Por lo tanto, acá la red de Eureka no entrega financiamiento. Es, eh, también a, apoya ¿no es cierto? a proyectos de I+.D. con orientación al mercado y también facilita obviamente el acceso a financiamiento a las agencias públicas. En este caso, eh, Corfo es la agencia que hace la entrega eh, de estos financiamientos. Y comentarles eh, brevemente, nosotros desde Corfo ya hemos participado o comentarles que desde la red de Eureka, ¿no es cierto?, tenemos alrededor de cinco programas eh, que tienen diferentes focos temáticos eh, y que se implementan en los diferentes países que están asociados a esta red, ¿no es cierto? En líneas generales, nosotros hemos estado abordando durante este último tiempo dos de estos programas. Uno de ellos es Network Projects, que son pro programas de llamados bilaterales o multilaterales entre diferentes países que pertenecen a la red de Eureka y en donde nosotros propiciamos ahí la utilización del instrumento CREA y Valida Eureka para el desarrollo de estos proyectos en Chile. Y por otra parte, y para, para eso estamos acá, eh, tenemos también eh, los programas de clúster, que son programas, ¿no es cierto?, focalizados temáticamente. Ahí pueden ver ustedes, peque en, en chiquitito, ¿no es cierto?, diferentes programas que están suscritos al programa de clúster, como Uroya, como Smart, como Shex, entre otros. Hoy día vamos a hablar solamente de lo que tiene relación con Euroya, ¿ya? Para que lo tengan ahí en claro. Y además hay otros programas que eh, también están dentro de la red que por ahora no los vamos a tomar entendiendo que todavía no tenemos una participación activa en ellos. ¿Qué es importante? Chiquillo, anótenselo, por favor. Muy importante, página 1, dentro de la formulación de un proyecto de colaborativo internacional es la estructura. Nosotros aquí, ¿qué es lo que esperamos? Que siempre hayan al menos dos empresas. Una empresa que lidere el proyecto y una empresa partner. Adicionalmente pueden haber otros, sí, efectivamente pueden haber otros, pero la idea es que hayan al menos dos empresas que ten, no tengan relación, que ten, sean completamente independientes, pero que tengan eh, participación colaborativa en el desarrollo del proyecto. Eh, también es importante que ninguno de los países o participantes puede tener más del 70% del costo total, esto de manera que realmente se evidencie la colaboración, ¿no es cierto? No, puede, no es posible que un, un proyecto tenga el 100% porque ahí ya se pierde un poco el sentido de la colaboración de un proyecto de más de maíz. Proyectos que en líneas generales tienen que durar alrededor de dos años. Los proyectos también, esto de, va a depender obviamente del instrumento que se utilice, pero esto es, es, son, son lineamientos estándar, ¿no es cierto? Obviamente, el sentido del proyecto que ustedes armen colaborativamente no puede tener eh, eh, un foco de defensa, sino más bien civil. Y acá es súper importante, por eso, como es colaborativo, el match. Y es por ello que aquí el matchmaking es la clave. Acá, antes de pasar a qué instrumento ocupamos, el detalle de los instrumentos, cuánto es el subsidio, ¿no es cierto? Que me imagino que son las principales dudas, es cómo empiezo mi proyecto de colaboración internacional. Entonces, cuando nosotros decimos que tenemos que tener al menos dos empresas, una chilena y una extranjera que sean totalmente independientes, hablo de empresas extranjeras que participen, ¿no es cierto? En este caso, en lo que es estén asociados, ¿no es cierto?, al clúster de Euroya. 
necesitamos planificar bien, ¿no es cierto? Estos son procesos de alta, de largo aliento, en, en líneas generales de entre tres y nueve meses. Por lo tanto, es súper importante saber y planificar con tu partner qué es lo que quieren hacer en conjunto, para qué lo quieren hacer en conjunto, y obviamente eh, tener la, la visión de, de poder generar una oportunidad atractiva para que estos proyectos puedan ser adjudicados por cada una de las agencias, ¿no es cierto?, que están participando. <ríe> es por ello que también la exploración y la investigación es muy importante dentro del desarrollo de este proceso de matchmaking para saber si efectivamente los partners son estratégicos o no para el desarrollo del proyecto. Y por último, el seguimiento. Acá hay que ser súper constante. Esto es como nosotros siempre lo decimos, un pololeo, un pololeo en donde necesitamos conocernos, necesitamos conocer bien lo que quiere el uno del otro, necesitamos saber también qué acuerdos vamos a tomar en marco, por ejemplo, de confidencialidad, de, de, de patentamiento, de propiedad intelectual. Entonces, para ello tienen que buscar a un partner que sea de total confianza para ustedes. Nosotros desde Corfo estamos propiciando una serie de alternativas para ello y obviamente aquí Nicolo también nos está apoyando desde el área de Euroya para hacer que estos match se conviertan en realidad, se conviertan en proyectos colaborativos. Y es por ello, ahí Nicolás nos va a apoyar más en su presentación, que efectivamente dentro de lo que es el programa Cluster se tiene una vitrina o se tiene una se podría ser una plataforma que permite visibilizar, ¿no es cierto?, a aquellas personas, empresas, en este caso chilenas, que tengan proyectos atractivos, que quieran eh, generar colaboración con otros países, y es por ello que dejamos acá esta herramienta eh, que les permitiría, ¿no es cierto?, poder escribir un breve abstracto de su empresa, pero de su proyecto, para que la otra persona de Uruya los pueda encontrar, se puedan poner en contacto y pueda empezar a comenzar, ¿no es cierto?, este desarrollo colaborativo de proyectos. Así que toda esta información se la vamos a entregar para que ustedes la revisen. Y nos vamos también con algo súper relevante. Ya hablamos un poco, ¿no es cierto?, del matchmaking. Hablamos de la importancia de tener al menos dos empresas participantes. Hablamos de la importancia también del apoyo de esta herramienta Euroya para convertir estos match en posibilidades de oportunidades de desarrollo de proyectos colaborativos. Pero, ¿qué pasa después, no es cierto? Nosotros sea, tenemos un calendario, una fase internacional en la cual se abrió hace poquito. Eh, ¿Y qué pasa después, no es cierto? Tenemos que desarrollar un proyecto... Eh, van, vienen ciertas fases de postulación internacional y luego llegamos, ¿no es cierto?, cuando todo pasa por la parte internacional y está todo bien, hacemos dedos check para arriba, ¿no es cierto?, donde fijan, nosotros armamos, ¿no es cierto?, el instrumento de alta tecnología como el instrumento que les permite a ustedes poder desarrollar este proyecto colaborativo para el desarrollo de actividades que tengan relación a territorio nacional. ¿Ya? Entonces es súper importante lo siguiente, acá hay un proceso de postulación como bien le explicaba yo, eh, que en líneas generales, esto es muy general para el clúster, eh, se comienza ¿no es cierto? con la apertura de la convocatoria, con el trabajo antes diría yo del que es propiciar el matchmaking para poder tener un buen partner, se postula con este partner, se hace el cierre del llamado a la fase internacional, se hace la evaluación de estas reuniones de consenso entre esas agencias internacionales, donde estamos participando nosotros, y también eh, eh, todos los actores que son eh, relevantes del comité Euroya para poder, eh, ¿no es cierto?, generar las notificaciones que implican efectivamente si ustedes pasan a la etapa nacional o no, y luego de ello se pasa con todo, ¿no es cierto?, paralelamente a esta respuesta a la participación o a la postulación a Innova Alta Tecnología. ¿Qué es Innova Alta Tecnología? Yo me imagino que lo conocen. Es un instrumento, ¿no es cierto?, que apoya aquellos desarrollos de proyectos colaborativos, ¿no es cierto?, que se marquen en o que tengan una intensidad en investigación y desarrollan bien importante, que tengan alta incertidumbre y, y desafíos tecnológicos, y que tengan, por supuesto, así como Eureka también lo busca, un alto potencial de posicionamiento en el mercado, en este caso nacional, pero también global, ¿no es cierto? Y que también apunten a mejorar las capacidades internas que tiene la empresa en el aspecto de I más D más I. ¿Cuáles son los beneficiarios? ¿Quiénes puedes postular? Chiquillo, acá es súper importante. Eh, ya nos ha pasado varias veces que las empresas postulan aun cuando no tienen la antigüedad. Eso nos genera un tremendo problema tanto a ustedes por las expectativas que pueden tener 
como por nosotros, desde el punto de vista de que eh, efectivamente estamos tratando de entregar la información para que sea lo más veras posible. Acá es súper importante, a Innova Alta Tecnología solamente pueden postular todas aquellas personas jurídicas constituidas en Chile que tengan a lo menos tres años, ¿ya? Es importante señalarlo ahora porque efectivamente si ustedes están, quieren hacer una alta tecnología, quieren buscar un partner, tienen que al menos tener esa característica. Si no, no pueden participar de esta convocatoria, ¿ya? Así que súper claro, chiquillos, si no tienen a lo menos tres años, no pueden postular a una eurolla alta tecnología, como le llamamos nosotros. Eh, el cofinanciamiento es de hasta mil millones de pesos, en donde existe obviamente un cofinanciamiento de, por tamaño de la empresa, es decir, para las pequeñas empresas es un 70%, para las medianas un 55% y para las grandes empresas un 40%. Vamos, estamos recién lanzando esto, así que tranquilidad, vamos a estar haciendo más webinars, vamos a estar haciendo webinars abriendo la plataforma de Uroya, enseñándole a postular, enseñándole a hacer un PO, enseñándole a hacer un Full Proposal Project. Ustedes me dirán, ¿qué está hablando Carolina? Bueno, todo eso va a pasar, todo eso nos van a contar ahora y para cualquier duda, consulta, vamos a tener un espacio en este mismo webinar y también nos pueden ya escribir o al chat o a consultas difusioninnova.corfo.cl. Esto recién comenzó y estamos aquí para poder apoyarles en esta convocatoria. Ahora dejo con ustedes, voy a dejar de compartir. Y para la segunda parte, donde nos van a explicar todo lo que tiene referencia al programa, ojo ahí, vamos a, si se puede poner close eh, subtítulos también, les recomiendo, vamos a presentar a, a Nicolo Silvinic, Cristian, ya llegó también Cristian Casanueva, que es parte del equipo internacional. Cristian, si quieres puedes introducir a Nicolo y date hoy el pase. Muy buenos días. Hola, buenos días. Gracias Carolina. Eh, bueno, gracias a todos por estar con nosotros. Eh, Nicolo Chiverine es el, el Program Manager de Euroya 2030, el clúster de la red Ureca que está focalizado en descarbonización. Y él nos comentará y explicará el clúster en detalle. Y también lo tendremos en otras actividades que queremos hacer con todos los interesados en el clúster. Así que los dejo con él. Nicolo, please go ahead with your presentation and thank you very much for being with us. Gracias. Okay. Uh, can you see? Can you see the screen? Yes, screen? we do. Yes. Okay. Thank you, Christian. Okay. So, muchas gracias. Uh, um, my name is Nicolo Cividini. I'm the Euroja office and program manager. So I, I deal with everything related to the administration of Eurogia and the, also the calls. Uh, and I will give you a short introduction on the Eurogia as a cluster uh, and also about the call that we have open uh, right now, uh, which is called 27. So uh, Eurogia is the As, as Carolina already gave you some informations about the Eurogia, uh, we, you saw before that under the Eureka cluster program, there are five clusters and each one of these clusters is thematic. We have our own communities in the industry, uh, in Europe, in South, uh, South America, in Canada, in, in, East, in the East, uh, and every single cluster has different communities. Uh, Eurogia is the cluster uh, directed addressed to low carbon technologies. Low carbon technologies doesn't mean only the, in the energy sector, but all that kind of technologies that can also be outside of the energy sector, which has a direct impact on the carbonization process, which we are trying to, to fight. Uh, we are a 20 years old cluster. We started in 2004. 20, uh, Um, but I can say that since 2019, the cluster reached a uh, new life uh, in general. In the three years, 19, 20, 21, and 22, we had uh, a big growth of plus 200, 230%. Um, now, I'm recently I am preparing the data for 2023 and 2024, and I can tell you that this number is also increased. So every year we see many more um, projects coming from all the world. Also from Chile, it's important to say this is the second year we are supported from, from Chile and from Corfo. We started 
uh, in 2023, this is the, the second year. Uh, and so far we, we can see that the collaboration is quite good. Um, as I as I said, we started in 2004 and now in 2024 we uh, we arrive as Euroja 2030. So Euroja is the name of the cluster and then every 10 years we, we change more or less the concept. Now it's 2023 where we are dealing and addressing. Um, as I said, it's dedicated to low carbon energy. As I said, it's not including only the energy mix and the value chain, but it's more than that. Um, Euroja, as well as the other cluster, uh, receive mandate from the Eureka network to operate until 2025. Now we are in the process to extend this mandate for other seven years, probably we will see, but for another period of at least five years for sure. Uh, and what we do here is actually we are the bridge between public authorities, in your case Corfo, between your company and the other companies inside our community. We are the person in the middle helping you in the submission process. And when we see the submission process, we are talking about the project as a whole. So the project where every single international partner is participating. This is important, an important difference between our work and the work of public authorities, because public authorities, they, they only focus on their company from, from their country. Instead, we want to see the project in all its dimension, international dimension. So our vision is based on what we call the 5D strategy, decarbonization, democratization, digitalization, deregulation, and decentralization. These are all characteristics that a project should have more or less. For sure, the decarbonization characteristic it should be central in every single one of our projects. Also, our projects always have a part about digitalization, like Internet of Things, for instance, IoTs. Uh, the, the other democratization, the regulation, the decentralization can be or cannot be in the project, depending on the single project. Uh, for instance, a project about a smart grid uh, or about um, off grids, you know, grids outside of the bigger grids. It's a project where that um, I identify in the decentralization and in the democratization part of our 5D strategy. When you go in our website uh, and you go in under the section where there are the documents, you can see there is a document which is the technology roadmap. The technology roadmap is a document where we list more or less uh, every single um, part, every single technologies that may be included in our calls. And the technology roadmap, it's, um, it is structured into these five chapters. Uh, so you can find this quite easy to, if, if you read the document to understand. Um, so on the left, you can see that four pillars have been considered uh, in, in, the, in, the, in the last years carbon-free energy supply, green mobility, smart cities, smarter housing and constructions, bioresources and environment. However, this list is not uh, exhausted. Um, you, everything that you can think where you have a direct impact on the decarbonization process of our society can be considered uh, from, from our uh, program. Uh, here you can see, for instance, uh, a list of thematic areas, a little bit more um, described. For sure, hydrogen economy is really, I, I put it here in the top, since it is one of the main focus we are we are developing in the last two years, especially from Corfu, there is also really interest um, for, uh, about this, this the hydrogen economy. Uh, then, of course, everything related to CO2 cap carbon capture and sequestrations. Green and zero emission buildings, smart cities, heating, heat pumps, for instance, uh, lots of technologies about heat pumps are really important for us. And as I said, we, we also have some parts related to digitalization, which in every project should be there. So IT solutions, 3D construction, digital twins, in housing design, and also artificial intelligence, IoT, big data. So all of these, usually they are uh, they are sustaining, uh, they're not central in our project, but, but they are sustaining uh, a technology which is directed more uh, about the decarbonization. Uh, 
I, we also recently included two years ago uh, monitoring of the environment and bioresources. Also because bioresources sometimes in some projects that are also connected, uh, strictly connected with hydrogen. Uh, for instance, the use of bio waste in combination of hydrogen is something that we saw already in some of our projects. Um, as I said, the, uh, decentralization, we have projects about smart grids, microgrid, and e-mobility. Uh, and here on the top left, we also uh, are more into renewables. Of course, renewables are always there. Offshore wind turbines, bioenergy, solar panels, uh, etc. So you can see that uh, the scope is quite, quite big, uh, but it could be also bigger. Um, in the past three years, also, we had a big growth and we also had some achievements, which I wanted to share with you. We had new board members from Turkey and Portugal. This is important to know. If you are submitting a project with us, if your projects get labeled, if you want, you can ask to become a member of the board of Euroja. Uh, so uh, as of now, we have seven members. And as a board member, you will have uh you will have insight into the Aeroja program um and you can use the program in a very smart way uh to 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 bring to yourself some projects uh and to and to develop furthermore uh the the, the impact you have on our community uh another achievement is that we had three joint calls with the other clusters in the past um two joint call about artificial intelligence and one about sustainability um, the one about artificial intelligence was okay. The one about sustainability was really, uh, really successful for us. We had also a, a thematic call on green transition. So probably in the, it's possible that in the future we will have other thematic call alone or with the other cluster. We will see. Um, our supporting countries are continuously expanding. Uh, we gained South Korea, Chile, of course, I said two years ago. Denmark and UK. UK finally come back after some years. Now we are we are having more support also from France, for instance, and Germany. So in general, we obtain in, in the next in the last three, four years quite uh, more support from the countries that we had before. So our community and our connection with public authorities is getting stronger. These are the supporting countries we have. Uh, actually, in this table, I have to add Ireland uh, because I've been communicating like two days ago that uh, Ireland also will support Euroja. But for the rest, we can say this is quite um, quite uh, updated. From the Americas, we have Chile and Canada. Uh, we are discussing with uh, Brazil, uh, with other clusters also. From Asia, we have South Korea and Singapore and from Africa, uh, South Africa. Now... As I said, every every information you want about Eroja, you can find it in our website. Uh, here you see the menu, it's quite clear. If you have more information, you will find my contact at the end of this presentation, you can always ask. There is call guidance, there are the documents, there is the brokerage tool. Here you can see, uh, you can see I will talk about this a little later, but uh, Carolina, before she was, was talking about a platform, where you can upload your um, your ideas or your expertise, and you can find it here in our web in our website and here. But in the presentation of course, for you also can find the QR code to to have access directly. Uh, and another section that is quite important for you is the funding section here. Uh, here you can see every class every country that is supporting us with the contacts. Uh, in some of these countries also, there are already the, um, the funding rules. Carolina was talking about before the percentage of funding that you may receive according if you are a large industry or SME or a small industry. Uh, so every country has this kind of information and you can find this information under the funding section. Um, now, let's talk about the call that is open right now. Right now it's open the call 27. It has been launched in early September and the deadline will be the 15th of November. It means that the 15th of November is the last day you can submit your project. To submit your project, you can go 
in the uh, in our plat in another platform. It's not the same platform as we were talking about. It's a submission platform. You can find this platform uh, here under the Eurojust 2030 page. You can find every all information. Once you go inside this platform, you have to register and then you can download. Uh, you can sorry, you can upload uh, the, the 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 PO or the FPP, the full project proposal, in the submission uh, page. But uh, there will be time in the future uh, if you are more interesting to have another session where where I can explain more in detail uh, the PO document, the project outline, and the submission process. But actually, it's quite simple. You go just in the tool, you register, and you can submit. Um, as Karina was talking about before, we have the PO and we have the FPP. So our program, our submission is in two steps. The first step is the project outline. Um, so if you want to submit a project with us and it's the first time you submit a project with us, you can submit just one document, which is called PO. Uh, this is a short document, 15, maximum 20 pages. You give us a first uh, a first idea of your project. Uh, it's important that we have this, this first step because always we give back to you very good feedbacks from us, but also from Corfo because they, they also run in parallel their own evaluation. We, gi we can give you very, uh, very efficient uh, advice to present a better full project proposal. So for instance, in the last two calls, the ratio of full project proposals labeled was more than 90%. And the reason is because the at the project outline, we give advice to present a very, very good FPP. So we are receiving very high quality FPP because there is the first step. So when you submit a project, the, the Euroja Technical Committee will evaluate this project and we will get back at you uh, with an invitation to submit an FPP, a full project proposal, in the following call. The following call will be uh, call 28 uh, and the deadline will be in March. So more or less during the year, we have three cutoff, one in March, the first one, the second in June, and the third one in November. Um, once you submit the second step, full project proposal, so it means that your project outline has been found positive, we are inviting you to full project proposal. If your full project proposal satisfied our uh, evaluation, our eligibility criteria, and also the public authorities evaluation and eligibility criteria, in that case, we will give you the label. So it is not just Eroja that decide for the label. Before giving you the label, we will talk with the public authorities if they like the project, and if we like the project, we will give you the label. Once you have the label of the project, in, there is just one label for all the projects, every single partner will go to submit national applications. So in your case, you will submit national applications with Corfo. If in your projects you have German partners, German partners will submit national applications to uh, Germany public authorities. So this is the process uh, more or less. Um, some suggestion on how to present a successful project for us. These are some, uh, it's a description of how a project should be. As I said, you have to be in line with our scope. So it needs to be about low carbon technologies beyond the state of the art. So the first word that we want to, to see when we when you look at our your project, it's innovation. If you're bringing innovation, we are talking about a good project. If there if we don't see innovation, we cannot continue. This is an R and D program. Program. Uh, just to give you an idea, uh, I didn't read it written here, uh, but the TRL, uh, the TRL is the the scale that uh, identify the R and D process. Uh, of our project is from three to seven. So three, it's the end of the uh, research part, let's say academy uh, level. Four, five, six is usually the, uh, the industrial scale up, implementation and scale up. 
and then seven is the starting of the commercialization, seven, eight, nine. So more or less our projects should go from three to seven. That's why it's innovation is important. Um, also, we want to see that there is a real important international collaborations in this, um, in this, in this project. So uh, international collaboration, it means that you need to have more companies, university research institutes, institutes from different countries. The minimum required is that you have at least two countries with at least two companies. This is the minimum. Um, but in general, the more you are creating in terms of ecosystems, the, the better is for us, the project. Also, the, the consortium, so that the partners needs to have, a, needs to be balanced. So every single partner needs to have a, uh, an important um, role in the project. So balanced consortium, you can find this information in our, in our website and in our documents. Balanced consortium means that one company and one country cannot hold more than 70% of the project in terms of budget. So if the budget is you know, 1 million, if you have one company with more than 700K, for us, it's not balanced. Then this is not a strict rule, but more or less this is the rule we follow every, every time we see if the, if the consortium is balanced. The project uh, should be mid-sized, from 2 million to 10 million. Um, we also consider projects short, um, smaller than 2 millions, uh, but I can say that the smallest I, I remember is uh, 800K. Of course, when it's lower, there is not a strict rule uh, for which we, we, we reject the project, but I can tell you that technical committee will consider this not as a good point. So it could be rejected still. Uh, also, we want to see that the impact of the project is in a, uh, in a medium uh, time, not in a long range time. So the duration of the project should be around two, four years. It could be five. Um, but what we want to see, as I said, TRL three to seven is that we reach seven. We reach the starting of the commercialization. So a direct impact in our market within five years. This is our goal, more or less. Point eight, it's probably the most important point. From the very beginning, you should have also uh, a real clear communication with the public authorities to understand really well the eligibility criteria. This because maybe you, you, you spent one month to prepare a nice PO, but then we can see that your company uh, is just six months company. And as Carolina was saying to you, uh, you need at least three years for, for their program. This is, for instance, something that we consider. Every single uh, public authority has its own funding uh, eligibility criteria, uh, and you have to consider that. So keep uh, communication with them. And in case you will have partners from, from another country, uh, suggest them to, to have contact always with the public authorities. Uh, uh, this is the brokerage tool I was talking about. Here, as you can see, you can do four things. You can upload your project idea. If you have a, an idea and you are searching for partners, you can upload your project idea. Or if you want to participate in a project from someone, some other person, some other company, you can upload your expertise offering. And the other two things is that you can look for people that uploaded expertise offering, or you can look for other project ideas. So it's a very simple tool. Uh, you can already take a look. There are many, many ideas inside there, many expertise offering. You can already uh, use it. Um, usually we organize one or two, depending. This year, is this is the second event we are organizing, PO Day in Paris. It will be at the end of this month. Um, in February, we had the PO days in London. Uh, during this event, uh, what we do is in the morning we give um, we give all the all the introductions to Euroja, to the Eureka network, to in this case BPI France. So it's the the French public authorities. We also give the the presentation about French 
uh, public authorities um, eligibility criteria. Uh, so in the morning, it's about presentation about the program in general. In the afternoon, instead, it's about um, we, we give the floor to members of our community from the industry to take 15 minutes to present their idea, to present their self to the community. It's usually a, a good uh, event to, to create uh, collaborations. Uh, the PO Day in London was hybrid. There was also um, an online session. Unfortunately, the PO Day in Paris will be only physical event, so no hybrid, I'm sorry. But you will find all the presentation and all the company's presentation in our website at, after the event, for sure. Of course, you are invited to participate if, if you have a visa already. Um, so to close, I, will, I want to give you just some ideas of some projects, running projects that we had in the past. Um, here you can see energy shared, development of low carbon residential microgrid with advanced energy exchange and payment capabilities. This was uh, from um, three from, sorry, five companies from Turkey and one company from Canada. So you can see here, it's not important that you have like five from Turkey and five or five from Canada. What is important is that the budget is balanced because maybe uh, in this case, for instance, Canada has more or less half of the budget. So for us, it was it was still balanced consortium. Uh, this project ended uh, two years ago. Then we have gain for seeing societal impact on energy efficiency by gamification based IoT platform. So here you can see that the digitalization part of the project was central, but was directed to uh, improve the efficiency of uh, domestic um, energy consumption. So in this case, again, we had uh, four companies from Turkey and one from Germany. You can see that many of our companies are from Turkey because uh, the Euroja program uh, we have, but in general, all the Eureka clusters have lots of participation from Turkey. Turkey is one of the one of the top countries, um, also because they are not part of the European Union, but through Eureka they can have access to the other um, countries easily. So that's probably the reason. But in the last uh, two years, we can saw we, we saw that also uh, our focus uh, has moved a little bit more. As I said, UK now, UK, Switzerland and uh, Germany, they are our top countries with Turkey. Uh, solar Pact, Smart Algorithm and User Interaction for Residential and Commercial Solar Prosumers. This was from Belgium and Turkey. Again, this project uh, ended last year. Smart Wind, this was about, um, about wind uh, efficiency, uh, reduction of the total cost of renewable wind power generation and levelized cost of electricity. So um, it was about operation and maintenance for wind farms, more or less. Uh, Spain, Germany, and Turkey were the countries involved. And what is interesting is that the smart wind ended two years ago, but then uh, Netash here, which was one of these partners, they, they submitted with us uh, one year ago uh, another project, which is like the, the follow-up of this one. This is quite interesting. And the project is about to start uh, now. So we can say that one, once you are inside the community, once you create uh, a linking with other companies and once this, uh, the, you have a project, then it's, it's easy to maybe start another project and, and continue with this work. And this is a, an example. Um, and the AS, uh, CSA it recently started. It's nearly zero energy concepts for solar apartments. So I was talking about um, smart building before. And here is the first project we have with South Korea, Turkey and Portugal. Uh, and it recently started a really interesting concept. And last, I wanted to show you for the hydrogen, a project related to hydrogen. This is the second hydrogen related project we have so far with a consortium from Austria, Poland, Hungary, Turkey, and Portugal. And it was to, directed to develop green ammonia, uh, green ammonia from, from green hydrogen, of course, it was to, to, um, for the ammonia in the hydrogen. 
Um, we also have from the same company, Aspil Sun, we also have another project uh, um, that he should re start recently about uh, bio waste, biofuels, and hydrogen all in one project. Really holistic, really interesting. Um, so those were some examples. Here you can see instead some, uh, it's not exhaustive list, it's some um, companies participating in our project. Instead, here you can see our board member, uh, Igdash recently uh, recently uh, go out of our board member and it has been replaced by another Turkish company, which is called Isfalt. So now we have Grupo Air from Portugal, Energisa, which is one of the top companies um, in the energy uh, market in Turkey. We have Bureau Veritas from France, uh, which probably you, you know already. We have Rengen, which is an SME, um, which is an SME from Turkey, and uh, Eurescom, it's um, a telecommunication company from Germany, and Paycor also from Turkey. Uh, so it is possible for you to enter in this group in case you want in the future, um, in case you're interested, only after your project is labeled by us, from us. So. To end my uh, my presentation, you can find all the information on in in our in our website. You just go on Google or write Eurogia, and you can find it easily. The brokerage tool I already explained. Please keep really into consideration your communication with national funding bodies. Authorities always needs to be in the loop. We always try to keep them in the loop, but also from your side should be like that. And finally, I want to tell you something. The Eurasia cluster is here also to give you support on, on the PO, on the FPP. So every kind of question you have, both from administrative and from technical part, please send us an email and I we will help you. The office will help you. If you need also technical support, we will give you technical support from our expert. For instance, we have an expert on the on hydrogen. He can tutor you, of course, he, in case he will tutor you, he cannot then evaluate the project. But uh, to, to say that the, the cluster is here to help you presenting, to help you arriving to the public authorities with the best project that you can, you can present. So these are my contacts. You can write me an email to contact at eroja.com, but you can find these informations in, in the website. Okay, so this is the end. I I, I hope I, I say in the time, didn't went too long. You are good, Nicolo. So, Thank you, you very much. Thank you. No worries. Thank you. Bueno, como para resumir un poco la presentación de Nicolo, él nos comentó bastante en detalle eh, los focos tecnológicos de Euroya, que es la estrategia 5D, donde descarbonización, digitalización, desregulación, eh, son parte de, de la estrategia. Eh, Euro ya, si bien tiene un fuerte foco en descarbonización, no es solamente ese tema, es un poco más amplio. Eh, nos interesan los proyectos de hidrógeno verde, nos interesan los proyectos de energía en general, pero también los proyectos de Smart City y en términos de digitalización son muy importantes. Eh, entonces, en ese sentido, eh, hay una amplia, una amplia gama de eh, proyectos y más de maíz que ustedes pueden presentar eh, y postular al clúster de Euro ya. Eh, eh, como Carolina lo explicó al inicio el matchmaking es muy importante es la clave para desarrollar un proyecto los invito de verdad a revisar el brokerage tool eh, la plataforma matchmaking que tiene Broya porque ustedes pueden ofrecer servicios y más de pueden buscar partners para empezar a desarrollar un proyecto pueden sumarse a un proyecto y más de o también pueden, pueden buscar empresas que ya han ofrecido servicios y más de MAI. Entonces hay cuatro alternativas para buscar un partner y que les va a permitir de alguna manera en consolidar una postulación, armar el consorcio y presentar todo el project outline como el full project proposal. Ni eh, hay una pregunta bien interesante de Constanza Stench y eh, I saw, I saw she's asking about yeah. Italy. Yes, Nicolo, um, okay. uh, I so, would like yeah. you to handle that question to you. Yes. Can, can, can a Chilean company develop an Euroja project, an Euroja application with an Italian company? Okay. Okay. So I uh, actually, I am Italian. So it's a good question. Um, so 
yes, you can have an Italian company in your project, uh, but unfortunately, we have no support from Italy. Um, so you saw before the, the list of countries supporting us, not all the countries are supporting us. So for, us, for, for instance, the Netherlands are not supporting us. The Netherlands, they support ITEA, which is the clusters about uh, IT, uh, but they don't support Eurasia. Also, Italy, Italy doesn't support anyone. So Italy is not really participating in, in, the, Eureka in the Eureka network in general, not just the clusters, also Eurostars and also other program, Italy is not really participating. That's a pity, but that's what it is. We are working, trying to, to contact with them, but it's not easy. Uh, the Ministry of Economics and Financials is not really that op open. So you can have an Italian partner, but they cannot submit an application to receive funding from, from Italy in this case. So the, you have two cases. One case, the, the Italian partner self-fund. So the Italian partner declare, uh, you, need, uh, you need to present a document where they declare they will self-fund through all the duration of the project. It's important also because this is a warranty for you, of course. Um, second uh, possibility is that uh, the, 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 the Italian partner uh, receives some fundings elsewhere with other programs, but I have no information about this. But in that case, for us, it will be like self-funding I mean, because the money is coming from another part, not from our network. So it doesn't deal with us. And the third option, but in this case, you should check with, with your public authorities, if is that you can subcontract them. So the part of budget of the Italian company will be subcontract to the, the Chilean company, for instance. But every single public authority has different rules in terms of subcontractors. Uh, so you should check with Corfo what's their rules for subcontract. I don't know if from Corfo it's possible to subcontract from to a, a company which is not in Chile. I believe it is. Uh, what do you say, Christian? Yeah, it, is, it is possible. It, it is possible. Okay. Yeah. So the, the third option is the subcontract. In that case, the budget from the Chilean company, the, the Chilean company will, uh, sorry, the Italian company will not be a partner for us, but it will be a subcontractor. So when you submit the project, you will instead of put P partner, you will be you will put SC subcontractors. That's it. Yeah, but so in that in that case, Nicolo, the Chilean company will still need to require a partner. Right? The Chilean comp sorry, in the Chilean companies in that in still? the third option that you are presenting that the Chilean company is subcontracting the yes. Italian company. Yes. Can company was still required. Yeah, yeah, a, of course, of course. Yes. yes, of course. Yeah, the subcontractors has to be a subcontractor to one of the partners. Yes, no. of course. Like no, for instance, course. in in UK, in UK, you uh, you cannot subcontract more than twenty percent of your budget. So if your budget is something, the subcontract part could only be below than twenty percent. For instance, that's an example. Okay. Entonces, Constanza, para poner un poco en contexto, existe un cierto grupo de países que apoyan al clúster de Uroya y estos países han asegurado financiamiento para los proyectos que tenemos eh, de Uroya. Chile es uno de esos, Francia es otro, eh, Ale Alemania, Austria, Turquía, son países que apoyan directamente al clúster. Italia en estos instantes no está apoyando al clúster. Sin embargo, tú todavía puedes postular con un partner italiano siempre y cuando se cumplan una de las siguientes condiciones. El partner italiano entrega o tiene todo el financiamiento necesario para desarrollar el proyecto con la empresa chilena, o dos, la agencia de financiamiento italiana decidió apoyar el proyecto y le está entregando financiamiento a la empresa italiana para que trabaje con la empresa chilena. La tercera opción es que a través del instrumento de innovar tecnología la empresa italiana sea contratada, subcontratada, perdón. Esa es otra opción. Pero en ese caso, tú vas a tener que buscar otro partner para, eh, para poder presentar tu postulación. Esa sería la respuesta a tu duda. ¿Alguna otra pregunta? Si tienen alguna pregunta y no la pueden hacer en inglés, la, puedo hacer, eh, la pueden escribir en el chat o, la, o pueden eh, comentarnos y yo puedo preguntarle tranquilamente a Nico. No hay ningún problema. Hola Cristian, ¿cómo estás? Hola Katia. 
Mira, lo que no me quedó muy claro es que el clúster, eh, en el caso de nosotros que nos interesan los partners de Alemania, nosotros tenemos que buscar las empresas que nos interesan para, para hacer el proyecto y después postular con ustedes, o ustedes tienen una base de datos de empresas. Exactamente. Eh, tú tienes que buscar el partner. Nosotros podemos apoyar de distintas maneras en la búsqueda del partner. Entonces, primero, la primera búsqueda parte de ustedes. Y si ustedes ya tienen alguna conexión con Alemania, es, lo mejor es explotar esa línea de trabajo. Segundo, nosotros podemos apoyar eh, con una red de contactos que eh, de alguna manera hemos ido desarrollando con el tiempo. Y tercero, está esta plataforma Brokerage Tool que presentó Nicolo, en la cual te permite buscar empresas de Alemania. Si quieres más información, porfa, nos puedes mandar un correo y no hay ningún problema. No de nada. Yeah, gracias. If I might add, uh, Christian, yeah, then sure. you can you can translate. Um, we you can also directly ask to us if we know something, someone. For instance, you are searching for a partner in the IoT section sector. You can send me an email saying we we are a company from Chile. We want to develop this project, but we need a specific partner that has this characteristic. Do you know someone? And then we can check in our community. We can pick up the phone and ask to our board members because our because our board members they have lots of connection, and we can find you a partner. So. Uh, brokerage tool, you can ask Corfu to support to, uh, to, to, to find a partner or to, you can send us an email and we can help you in that. Or you can also participate in our events and then of course you, you directly meet people. Básicamente Katia, también le puedes enviar un correo a Nicolo explicando eh, un poco tu proyecto, las necesidades que tienes, las características que requieres para buscar un partner y ellos con la red de empresas que tienen también podrían apoyarte en la búsqueda. Yeah, gracias. Quisiera, de nada, quisiera agregar algo. Nicolo, could you present the slide of the PO day that will happen in Paris? Please. Sorry, are you asking the, the slides of the PO days? Yes, the, just, just that. Uh, uh, just the, the slide, the yeah, slide, just, yeah, yes. Yeah, yes. just the flyer, yes. Ah, okay. That one. Bueno, yes. quiero comentarles una cosa. Eh, ir a estos eventos requiere tiempo, eh, los PO Day, eh, requiere tiempo y planificación, lo sabemos. Eh, un PO Day es una instancia donde ustedes pueden presentar la, la, la idea de proyecto, pueden sostener reuniones con empresas eh, del partner y... Eh, en este sentido, es una muy buena instancia para conocer empresas y empezar a planificar una posible postulación al clúster de Uroya. Dicho esto, el, el instrumento Innova Alta Tecnología Eureka tiene un, un tema que permite eh, que ustedes vayan a, al PO Day, eh, encuentren el partner, desarrollen la postulación y si en el, desa el desarrollo de la postulación finalmente el proyecto es adjudicado de financiamiento nacional ustedes pueden reembolsar hasta 6 millones del viaje pero solo y solo si ustedes se adjudican el proyecto si ustedes van y después presentan el Project Outline y son rechazados en el Project Outline no van a poder reembolsar el, el viaje si ustedes van, presentan el Project Outline y luego el proyecto es rechazado eh, en la fase nacional tampoco van a poder reembolsar el viaje. Entonces, eso para que lo tengan en consideración también, ¿ya? O sea, hay una opción con la cual ustedes pueden reembolsar hasta 6 millones, pero también hay dos eh, eh, escenarios los cuales ustedes no reembolsan, Corfo no va a reembolsar este viaje, ¿ya? Así que, eh, si pueden, eh, el 10 de septiembre, si tienen algún proyecto y requieren, eh, creen que el proyecto es bueno, eh, merece ser presentado, pueden encontrar empresas alemanas, eh, los invito a revisar eh, sucintamente las bases de la alta tecnología para que puedan asistir a, al PO Day de Eurocha en París el 30 de septiembre en las oficinas del BP France. Nicolo, nos están preguntando eh, si va a haber otro PO Day. ¿Will you have, Nicolo, another PO Day for Eurocha? Sorry, can you repeat? 
Yes, we will have another PO day for Eurogia. Ah, yes, next next year. Yes, this is the last of this year, because then the 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 call twenty seven will end the fifteen of November, and then by the end of December we will reach a decision. Then in January we will launch call twenty eight. The deadline for call twenty eight will be in March. So probably the next PO day will be in February, but we don't know where. It could be in Turkey. It could be we did we did in London in February. Now we're doing in Paris. For sure, in the future we will have one in Turkey for sure because it's big a big community in Turkey. Um, of course. It is also possible to have events in Chile in the future. We we participated uh, two years ago with in October with you in the in the event you organized for hydrogen, if you remember. And we, yeah, the green, we came green there. hydrogen summit. Yes. Yes, the green hydrogen summit. We participated and we gave all the informations. It was not a PO day, but it was similar uh, from our side. So in the future, for sure, uh, there will be other events. Yeah. Great to hear. No sé si uh, podremos tener otros PO Days eh, en Madrid, eh, que podrían, van a ser publicados eh, eh, oportunamente en la, en la web de Broya y también nosotros lo vamos a hacer a través de Corfo. I can show again my contact. Yes, I, I hand on your contact. Well, too. actually, it's quite simple. It's contact at euroja.com. But when you go in our website, you can find you can find this under the contact section. Um, let's do. No, uh, it's okay. Uh, uh, okay, can you, yeah stop share. Yes. Um. So yeah, contact at eruja .com. In our website, under the news and events section, you can find the PO Day event with the link to register if you want to come. Uh, you are welcome. Uh, so these are all the information. You can also uh, you can always ask also for a private private meeting with me. And uh, as I said, as Euroja office, I can tutor you in the process if you have questions. Okay. okay. Sounds you. good. No, hay alguna otra duda consulta? No. Well. Nicolo, thank you very much for your time, for being with us. And uh, we'll invite you for our next session of a workshop to uh, develop and prepare the proposal. And, and that's it for today. I see um, a question, sorry. Oh, I see a question. What's Plaza? What's the yeah, uh, deadline? What's the deadline? Ah, like? the 15 of November. 15 el 15 de noviembre es el plazo final para postular, Sebastián, para que lo tengas en mente. Ok, Thank Listo. You very much. muchas gracias a todos, muchas Thank gracias you Nicolo, y yes. nos estamos viendo en una próxima oportunidad. Gracias. See you soon, Nicolo. Bye bye, see you soon. Chao.